This past winter when I was in Japan, I fell in love with mochi. Mochi is a rice cake that is so incredibly delicious. It's often sweet. Sometimes they even serve it in savory things. If you go to my blog, and of course I'll put a link below, but I have lots of pictures and reports of my time eating mochi in Japan. Anyway, today I'm going to show you how to make mochi at home. You don't even have to get on a plane to fly all the way to Japan. It's super, super easy to make and a recipe that you are going to want to keep forever. First, we're going to use our chopsticks to combine the sweet rice flour mochiko with our matcha powder. I'm going to add a little bit of water at a time, about a cup in total, until my rice flour is nice and moist and soft, but not too wet. Looks like I added a little too much water, so I'm going to just add a little bit more flour to dry it out. Okay, now it's at a good consistency, nice and soft, sticky, but not runny. So I'm going to transfer this to a floured workspace, my counter. And I'm just gonna sprinkle some more sweet rice flour onto the counter. That'll prevent it from sticking because I'm going to need my mochi dough. So place your mochi dough right onto your counter, onto the floured space, and just knead it like you would bread. It doesn't have any gluten in it, so it doesn't like, stick together and get all gummy and pooly like, like it would if you were using um, wheat flour, but you just want to combine it, make sure it's all nice and soft and smooth and together. And if you need to add a little bit more rice flour, go ahead and do that in case it starts to stick. Now that it's nice and combined, we are going to form our mochi dough into like a log shape. And then it's like pull off little ends. We're gonna have eight at the end. So pull off about, uh, I guess like two tablespoons worth of mochi dough and form it into a nice tight ball until you've used up all of your dough. Awesome. Now that you have all your dough, we're going to fill this with our red bean paste. Flour the palm of your hand so that it doesn't stick. Then place one of the mochi dough balls into the palm and flatten it out. All right, now you can just scoop a little bit, about a teaspoon or so of your red bean paste into the center. Now, like I mentioned before, it doesn't have any stretch and pull to it like wheat flour does. So you're basically going to have to shape this mochi dough around your center uh, red bean paste. So gently shape it. It's actually really easy and it's kind of like meditative. So make sure you just cover all of the center and pinch it closed. And then, now that it's closed, we wanna make sure it's nice and smooth. So roll it and form another ball with smooth sides. And then you can flatten it out just gently. And then place it on a non-stick surface. And continue back, flattening it out, putting a little bit of the red bean paste into the palm of your hand and shaping the dough around the center. Then make sure that's nice and smooth and flatten it and place it onto your non-stick surface. And just keep doing it until you're, you've done them all. Now that we have our beautiful mochi nice and shaped and formed and filled, we are going to grill it. Now, if you don't have a grill pan, you can use a cast iron skillet. Mine is a combination of the two, cast iron grill pan. Um, also, you can use a non-stick skillet as well. Once you have your skillet nice and warm, I keep it on medium heat, add some oil. I'm just using canola oil. I don't have a a brush for the grill, so I'm just using this paper towel just to make sure that the whole thing is nice and oiled. Place the mochi, as many as you can fit, onto your grill pan. And you're going to cook each side for about three minutes. After three minutes, flip it over and it should be nice and golden brown. And cook it on the other side for another three minutes. You also notice that the color begins to change and darken. It's not so powdery looking. So that means it's cooking, the rice is cooking, and it's getting chewier. Before it was soft, now it's going to be a little bit more chewy. 
great. So once each side is cooked, just place it onto a plate. I'm putting it on my wooden cutting board. I don't know why. And you can let it cool for a couple minutes. I like it when it's really nice and hot right off the grill. And finish up with the rest. In Japan, the traditional way of making mochi is not by using mochiko sweet rice flour. They actually pound rice, like in a huge, gigantic sort of mortar and pestle sort of situation. And making mochi is something that they do to celebrate the beginning of the year, which is super, super cool. You'll have to go here on YouTube and find videos of people pounding mochi. It's so amazing. But since we are in the U.S. and since we probably don't have access to, you know, traditionally making mochi, using mochi flour, uh, sweet rice flour, is a wonderful, wonderful alternative. Isn't that pretty? This is a fantastic snack. It's sweet, it's healthy, and as you see, it's very easy to make. Okay, now I have to try one. I want the one with the beans like bursting out of the side. Mm. So good. Oh my god. I, I just want to eat the whole plate. So delicious. So easy. Oh my goodness. It's just like I'm back in Japan. I love it. Have you had mochi before? If so, tell us in the comments below what you think of it. If you've made it, if you've eaten it, if you're obsessed with it, like I happen to be. Let us know. Also, if you have any other favorite Japanese recipes or dishes that you like to eat, I'm obsessed with Japanese food, so share those too. Check out my Japanese videos too. I made some in Japan and I'm constantly I'm making more here in the United States. I'll link to the playlist so you can check that out. I'll see you next time. Sayonara!